Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. You might recall from an earlier video, we were playing with this bridge rectifier that I'd made, and it was glowing the LED, and that was pretty much it. We kind of explained a few things of how it worked, but never really measured anything apart from just that uh, DC component here from these two points. So I've been thinking in the meantime, let's uh, explore it a little bit more. And uh, by the way, well, I actually found this too. That's a commercial one. Look at that. That's a little 3N259. And that does the same job. You can see there's your DC outputs on the outside and then your AC in the inside. So that's what a kind of standard pack for this would look like. Now we'll put that away though, because I wanted to talk to you about why, uh, and I wanted to have a look at these kind of weighed for me things. Um, it's tricky. And the reason it's tricky, if you want to hook up your bench oscilloscope, which I've got up there, you've seen it before, um, to mains projects, the problem is how do you, you know, what points do you measure? Because you're normally measuring between the tip of the probe and your ground uh, strap. So if you're measuring the DC part, for example, I would hook that on here, like so, nomp, and then just I'd clip that on like that. And then with the appropriate uh, ratio here, because you don't want to send too much power into your scope, because it'll have maybe a 300 volt limit, so you've got to be careful. And in fact, check everything. Remember, see what these rated for, if they're cat two, cat three. Um, and then you could measure that DC component. That would actually kind of be, should work in my mind. Yeah, see, even, see now I'm like, mm. but I tell you what will definitely not work. Um, and I'm even sure that might be iffy. The bit that's definitely not work is that. And the reason is this strap, this ground strap on your scope, uh, at least in the UK, and I can't speak for other countries, is connected to ground in your house through the mains plug. And effectively, what that'll mean uh, generally is that you'll have a live and a neutral, and a, a neutral, and uh, a neutral will be kind of at a ground level somewhere, like connected at your house with a big steel uh, copper pole in the ground or at the power station or something. So what will happen is you will just basically blow a fuse. Um, if you definitely connect there, you will definitely blow a fuse. I promise you that much. If you connect there to there, maybe I don't know. Uh, and there's like lots of people do like little tricks to try to get around this by like removing the earth strap from their scope. So the scrope, scope is at a scrope. The scope is at a floating uh, voltage, which is dangerous, deadly potentially, depending on where you're touching. So it's a really big problem. But I did want to mess with it so that we could actually just measure this stuff. Um, and the only other scope I had was a handheld scope with a metal case. And I was like, I'm not bloody putting that on here. It's not worth it. Sorry, not even for you guys, it's not worth it. So I thought, well, maybe what you could do, if you wanted to see the output of this to see if there's uh, how smooth it is, you could put a transformer here. So you basically have a rectifier going in and you've got a uh, transformer on the output. And then you're like, no, Transformers are AC devices, okay? So you definitely do not want to hook a transformer up like that because you'll be basically trying to drive it through uh, 200 and whatever volts uh, DC, and that's gonna be bad. So the other way of doing it is putting the transformer on the inputs. So I'll just show you where we got off last time. So I'm just gonna solder this back on. This is our LED. And uh, I did happen to actually put all this whole thing away in the box. I kind of thought, no, nah, I was done with it. And then it sort of kept me up. So what you do, we've got our AC, uh, sorry, our LED here. I'm just going to put that on there so we can remember where we left off exactly, electrically here. So that's our device. I'm plugging it in. Let's make sure there's no, it's not moving around. Right, we're plugging it in. The light is on. You can see the LED just glowing there in the... Uh, the pale, the pale light of the back office. And then I'm just gonna put our meter onto volts and I've got it on the DC range right now and I'm gonna very gingerly, very gingerly, touch it from here to here. And I like the way it moved around to try to bite me. And there's our 1.8 volts. And of course, might say minus because this is the positive output here. So you've got your minus 1.8. If I measure it on this side, it's 214 volts. And then if I switch it to AC mode, You'll see when I measure these two contacts here, we're measuring 238 volts at the moment. 
there good so my solution now with having a little root around in the back office boxes is this and that is a toroidal transformer transformers in disguise and it does contain a couple of different windings on it so it's kind of the equivalent of one of these right sort of but i think they're using different cases they're more better quality they're definitely more expensive um, and they're harder to mount so just to show you how it's made up it's got two uh, primary coils so two 115 volt primary coils here and they're outputting to two 15 volts so this is a power supply that can output two outputs and we're going to do it from one input in the uk um, because we're going to join these two together and in fact look i uh, dropped the gun and actually have joined them i've joined the purple and the violet together so we're going to use all of that potentially actually i think hmm if you uh, just as, a, as a, an aside if you um, attached the purple or the violet and the gray together and ran this that's fine you've got the 240 on the primary and then on the secondary you'll get these 215 volt outputs but interestingly enough i think if you tapped then the brown to the violet or the brown to the gray while they're connected like that you might get a hundred um and 15 volt output of that or 120 volt output yeah anyway we're not going to experiment with that portion of it today again i don't know it's a, it's all a bit uh, alien to me we shouldn't really be playing too much in this area should we areas we don't know but i kind of feel we understand transformers and we definitely want to see some measurements from that so we're going to take that off there so that's nice so we're going to turn this into a whole lower voltage one and i think let's see we're going to use the black and the red from the secondary so that's one of the 15 volt outputs so i'm going to hook those now in place so it's still ac and it still needs to be rectified but it's just lower now significantly lower voltage so it's measurable be measurable by our regular oscilloscope and not only that the transformer the reason we can measure it though is that the transformer is isolating right the transformer is isolating our mains right so if we have that that's our primary that's our secondary and that's our live and neutral and we're going to say somewhere at the power station the neutral and the ground are kind of uh, connected before, as I was saying, if you measure, uh, if you put your probes on, uh, you could, you'll get a bang because you'll short that out. But now you can see when we measure here, we can put our probe here and probe here. This goes off to some other part of the circuit. Um, and we're not interfering with that side of the circuit at all. We're just going to be measuring the differential between here. So good. That's the idea. If it doesn't work and it doesn't matter. It'll, it'll go bang and I won't show you the video probably. <laughs> You'll be seeing me. Why is he looking really shifty? Why has he got those dodgy bandages on his hand? Right, so I'm going to cook up these contacts to the primary now. So remember, our primary now consists of those two windings in series. Okay, that's the one. I'm just going to tin this up. Again, I don't really want to damage this transformer. We might use it, to be honest with you. We we're almost got a power supply at this point, haven't we? A few big capacitors. We're almost there. Now, I'm going to use my favourite uh, Poundland uh, insulating tape. We're not doing heat shrink because we're not really going to be playing with this more. It's just We're just going to try it out and then dismantle it. Oh, that's a lot. That's a hell of a lot of tape. Wasted it. You can hear my solder and iron grinding away in the background. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. Beautiful. Right, so turn off the solder. Well, leave the solder and iron on though, because this LED will do an interesting thing now. Right. So we're all hooked up. That should work out nicely for us. I'm going to be a bit ginger again, so as you know. I am ginger. I can see the LED now has a very slight uh, glow so our led is ever so slightly glowing what we could do now you could do the calculation and replace this resistor with one that would be suitable for that led but let's now put our voltmeter on that puts here so we're down to that it was 15.5 volts there before it flicked off yeah 15.7 volts we're reading and then the ac component coming in 
18.3 volts. So yeah, brilliant. I mean, that's what we wanted. So that allows us now, hopefully, to hook up our scope without something going bang. And uh, I'm really ginger about this, but look, <laughs> nothing went bang. Ooh, nothing went bang, hooray. Now you notice I'm still not just grabbing all of these, even though now potentially it's all okay. I'm just wary right now, If and you should be too. If you're not really super familiar with what you're doing, don't mess with it, trust me. It's just not worth it, especially if you're a youngster, a youngster. So I've got the oscilloscope on, and I'm going to take a measurement now, and instantly we can see that we're reading um, a 50 volts uh, sine wave. So that's what we want. Sorry, a 50 hertz sine wave, which is exactly what we would uh, want to see, which is absolutely fantastic. But what we really want to see is what was the output of the DC component and how clean is that? So I'm going to hook that up there and there. Mmm, you can see that's looking mighty interesting. So what we can do is use a couple of different probes here and we can overlay the two signals. This episode is sponsored by whatever this is. Um, yeah, I'm going to uh, admit something to you. Once I actually got the oscilloscope fired up, um, I noticed that some of the waveforms weren't quite what I was expecting. So what I did is I started to gather more and more and more probes until it was all getting a little bit out of hand. Just try this. Mm. And um, what I thought was, why not do this a bit more scientifically so I've got a whole different setup now. So I'll just plug it in show you what it does. We've basically got the input voltage here that's coming from here. So you can see it's fluctuating. That's because I think it's because we don't have any smoothing caps in there or chokes or anything like that. And then we've got the output measured from this module, which is a bit interesting because really that should say five volts because it should be coming from its five volt regulation. So yeah, we're gonna have to do a little bit more experimenting. But I thought this way we could easily put a load on here um, put all the probes on again and then really see um, what this this whole thing is doing because at the moment it's um, I say there's some interesting stuff going on on the scope and I need to sort of basically do a sanity check to make sure that everything else is as it should be but after this mm. okay it's really not as expected there's weird stuff going on here and you can see this output voltage here Apparently from the regulator is reading at 19 volts now so not sure what's quite happening I'll show you what's happening on the scope maybe you, you can shed some light on this mystery for me we'll just put the camera out and uh, you can see right there you've got the yellow and the blue traces those are the AC waveforms coming from the actual coil there so that's the top and the bottom part of that diamond shape there that one and that one and then the purple waveform is the positive output and the negative of the scope the ground is actually uh, attached to the negative part of our DC circuit and then you can see the green channel that's our supposedly five volts coming out of our uh, you know Vera board type power supply which gives you the three volts in the output uh, five volts output but when you see there it's weird that's the blue meter there that's currently reading 19.8 volts so there's definitely a lot of fishiness going on here um, and I'm not really sure where to go with it I've actually attached that fan there to the USB output and the fan is blowing hard way harder than I'd expect so yeah, it's it's not quite what, what I would expect. I mean, if you see the blue and the yellow waveforms there, I mean, they don't even look like a proper AC waveform, do they? They're sort of truncated at the bottom. You can see where the two and the one would be. Um, that's in the top left picture. That would actually be the center point of that line. 
So it's definitely not quite uh, the expected AC waveform that you'd, what you'd expect to see. So yeah, definitely a little bit more research needs to be done. Please feel free to comment down below or join the Discord. I might just keep this rig set up so that we can actually just play with it. It's an interesting topic. But like I see before long, we'll end up building a whole proper power supply if we're not careful just to solve the mystery of all of this. So uh, yeah, let me know down below. Like, share, subscribe if you know any people who are into electronics who might know the answer to this. As ever, thanks for watching. Just another test. It does seem like the linear power supply on this board has definitely died because I'm putting in 11.1 .1 volts and I'm getting a 10.1 out and I can only assume that the diode blocker uh, reverse current protection is what's taking out the... Um, that one volt of this circuit so yeah so it looks like this must have killed the regulation on this and I'm kind of tempted to I might just hook up this real quick thought you might like to bear witness to this I'm just going to disconnect my probes because I just want to do this test nude without the scope running it's a noisy old thing and I'm not sure it's going to help us in this case. We've got plenty of voltmeters here now. So we've got this voltmeter, which is reading the uh, contacts here. We've got this voltmeter, which should concur with this voltmeter, which is reading the output of this circuit, which is an LM31T based circuit. And it's got an adjustable voltage output. And we're connecting that to a standard desktop PC fan there. A master cooler, if it matters. So let's plug this in and see what happens. I'm going to turn the voltage down though. So we've got 1.682. Well, that's looking all right, isn't it? Not sure about this reading of 16 volts. Um, again, we're reading higher voltage than the AC input. So tell me about RMS and PMPO people. But yeah, so far, interesting. We've built a power supply of sorts.